and welcome to a special edition of Paul Dark Dish. I'm Marlies. And I'm Elise. And we're the, the Cornwall, Cornwall Cougars. Cougars. Rawr! Today we're going to be doing a special mega mini recap of Paul Dark Season 1. And then we're going to come back and talk about all our favorite parts. <laughs> I know what parts I like. <laughs> we're also going to talk about everything we're looking forward to in Season 2. Stay with us until the end because we have Paul Dark Dish quests yes. with lots of great prizes. Yes, it's going to be awesome. So grab a hold of your syllabubs and your teacups because here we go with eight mini recaps of Poldark season one. It's 1783 and Ross Poldark has just returned home from the American Revolutionary War. Sporting a scar down his left side which does nothing to affect his smoldering good looks. Ooh. Ow! But all is not how he left it in Cornwall, England. His father has died. His estate in par is in ruins. And his true love Elizabeth is betrothed to another. Two, his boring and not nearly as hot cousin, Francis Poldark. Mm. Ross arrives home to Nampara to find his father's lazy ass servants, Judd and Prudy. The villagers are thrilled to see Ross return. Who wouldn't be? But the village is in shambles since his father's death. They offer to help him and get the land back in order. But he can't pay. I'd work for free. Ooh, Cornwall Cougar. Go team. <laughs> we want Ross. Yes, we do. We want Ross. How about you? Rawr. Ross tries to get help from the bank, but the property is mortgaged to the hilt. Conniving George Borlegan and his uncle are plotting to get Ross on their side. Ross takes to the estate with a hammer, a shovel, and rippling biceps. Body by Bowflex. Yum, yum, give me some. Ross and Francis check out the mine. Francis wonders why Ross has an RSVP to the wedding. Francis won't shut up and explains that he never meant to fall in love with Elizabeth. So Ross shoves him into a pool of water. Francis can't swim! Yay! Yay! Oh, he pulls him out. Aww. Aww. At the reception, Elizabeth corners Ross. And Elizabeth says it was her own decision to marry boring Francis. It's market day and Ross decides to sell his father's watch. He saves a cross-dressing street urchin. And her shaggy dog from a dog fight. She's a runaway named Demelza. Her father beats her and she's not going home. So he decides to take her under his wing. I'll take a wing and a thigh. Finger licking good. Ross brings Demelza home. Judd and Prudy aren't happy. Shall we see them with crawlers? Tint right. Tint fair. Tint fit. Tint proper. So Ross gives her the 18th century spa treatment under the pump. Ooh, I want to go to that spa. Get my back. Money arrives from Uncle Charles. It's a payoff to get lover boy out of Dodge. So Ross goes to see his uncle and only finds Elizabeth. He asks her if all of their promises meant nothing. There's nothing for you here, Ross. I love boring Francis. Cleaned up Demelza's looking mighty pretty. Her father and his minor thugs pay a visit. Outside, Camp Poldark is beating a tin out of the Alugan miners. But Ross's men prevail! Woo! Demelza is hiding in the liquor cabinet. She overhears Ross saying that she's more trouble than she's worth. She decides to hit the road, but Ross finds her and throws her over his sack. Like a man. Mm. Elizabeth comes to ask Ross to stay. She says, everything that matters to you is in Cornwall. Like me. Ross says, don't worry. I'm going home. Home to Nampara. With Demelza. <gasps> Let, Let the, the love, love triangle, triangle begin. begin. We want Ross, yes we do. We want Ross, how about you? Demelza is giving herself a cold bird bath while Ross watches. A body must scrub herself raw as a buttock of beef to please her master. Ooh, I'd like to scrub that beefy buttocks raw. Judd and Prudy are chillaxing. While Demelza does all the dirty work. Meanwhile, Ross is scoping out Will Leisure. He offers Francis a chance to team up. Ross is gonna go to his banker for the investors. He wants it to be a war leg and free zone. Verity asks Ross to escort her to a ball at the assembly room. Like the ball at Netherfield, all the women oogle Mr. Smoldar. Miss Teague in a dangerously low-cut dress flashes the girls at Ross. Oh, you're fond of dancing, Mr. Smoldar. I fear I possess few of the refinements of polite society. Verity has an admirer. It's Sea Captain Andrew Blamey. Would you like to see my sketches? Is it rigging? Oh, I think I love you. I think I love you. May I speak to your father? Oh, I wish you would. I have a dark secret. It doesn't matter. I don't want to rush you. Rush me? My biological clock is ticking like this. Rattled and Randy, Ross runs to the arms of Cornwall's busiest hoe. May I be of service, my lord? There's only one service I require. Ka-ching! Ring me up! No charge! On the house! Buy one, get one free! Gift was purchased. All sales final. Please come again. Demelza's is picking flowers and Ross rides up. After his lusty encounter with Trampy Margaret, he feels a little dirty and needs to take a dip. A skinny dip, that is! Make it! Hot bottle alert! Oh, this is so wrong. Wait, why? You have mine. Oh, sorry. Oh, whoop, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. 
There's a family crisis. Elizabeth frantically pays a call on Ross. Ross thinks she's there to reclaim their love. And admits she made a huge ass mistake. But it's Ross that's mistaken. They're all up in arms over Verity. The captain's been secretly courting her. Verity tells Ross that Captain Blamey didn't murder his wife. It was an accident. And they love each other. Ross allows them to rendezvous at Mempar. Miss Teague and her pushy mom pay Ross a call. Pimping out her own daughter. One need only taste her syllabubs to know their own succulents. She needs to get her syllabus out of Ross's face. He has no interest in her syllabubs. Your syllabubs are wasted here. Did I mention the syllabubs? The password is syllabubs. I'll play. Blamage? Syllabubs. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Charles and Francis come to see Ross. They know that Barry has been secretly meeting the captain. Francis puffs up his chest and confronts the captain. But the Captain smacks down Francis. Somebody get my dueling pistols. <gasps> Outside. They aim. They shoot. They fire. Francis goes down. Of course he does. As Francis fights for his life. Verity can no longer see fit to go with the captain. They say their goodbyes. Poor Verity. Verity. Just before they carry Francis home. Elizabeth drops the bomb on Ross. I'm with child. And you know what that means? She's been pole dark. And not by Ross. Ross turns his attention towards Will Leisure and Demelza. She ain't going nowhere. And neither are the Cornwall Cougars. <laughs> Hot bottle alert! Yum yum, give me some. <laughs> Will Leisure is open for business. The miners are thankful to Ross for giving them jobs. Prudy's broken her wing and is no longer fit to cook vittles. Ross learns that young Jimmy Carter has been poaching. Oh, the Bulldog Poacher! Exactly. Demels is learning that a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. She's making a pie filled with love. At Jim and Jenny's wedding, the preacher tells Ross he should think about settling down. Elizabeth is in labor! Ross receives the birth announcement and has to make the obligatory visit. At the baby toast, Uncle Charles has a heart attack. Ginny is frantic. Jim is poaching again. So she runs to Demelza to ask for Ross's help. But Ross isn't home, so Demelza goes snooping through his office. And she finds this gorgeous blue gown that's just her size. Jim is busted and hauled off to jail. So Ross is riding into town to try to save young Jim. Demelza's father pays another visit. She has one day to make it right with Poldark or she's coming home. Back at the house, Demelza can't stay away from that blue gown. She's saying her goodbyes to the house as Ross comes home. But when he sees her, he flips out. Take it off, he says, or go back to your father. She begins to cry. So he kisses her. They kiss. <gasps> what? They kiss. Ross orders Demelza to go to bed now. So misunderstanding, she does. Why, Demelza? Whatever are you doing in my room? Will you untie my dress, sir? It unfastens down the back. Why, certainly, madam. However did you get it on alone? Oh, I can get it on. I just can't get it off, if you know what I mean. You know what they're saying about us, don't you? <gasps> if we behave like this, it will all be true. <laughs> but let it be true. <gasps> it's true. It's true. Ross tells Judd it's time to harvest the barley field. Hot bottler! He can side my fields anytime. Up one side and down the other. One side fits all. Scythe does matter. Elizabeth arrives like a wet blanket and Ross has to put his shirt back on. Demelza enters like a hot mess carrying a bunch of cornflowers. Suddenly, Elizabeth catches their glances to each other. Ross goes looking for Demelza, but she's gone. She's on her way back home. She can no longer be his servant. Which means she must be his wife. Oh, looks like the Cornwall Cougars are going to a wedding. Woo! Is Ross going to be shirtless in this episode? God, I hope so. Demelza is mistress of Nampara, and the whole town is all aflutter with gossip. What was Ross thinking marrying his kitchen wench? Yeah, he could have had his pickle wenches. How long did he actually know her? Welcome back to Ye Old Newlywed Game. We asked our couples, where's the strangest place you ever made whoopee? Ross? In my mother's green dress. No, she said teal. Teal? What does that mean? It means it's got green in it. And I see you haven't learned your letters yet, Demelza. It doesn't matter. My mother's color was green. It's really more turquoise. 
Demelza struggles to find her place. She still has cooking and chores to do. Small, dark, and handsome has other chores on his mind. The villagers are keeping a lookout for the pilchards. Without them, they'll starve. Ross brings Demelza a surprise. A book? So now she can learn how to do her letters. And ribbons. Tie up her unruly hair. Uncle Charles has a heart attack. Again! Before he dies, he asks Ross to look after his useless son. Good news! Severity's coming to stay. Demelza clumsily tries to play mistress of the house. Severity says, pump your brakes. Slow your roll. So Demelza figures they can share some bedroom secrets. Verity says, TMI, but I will teach you how to curtsy, dance, and set the tape. Verity and Demelza go on a shopping spree. Demelza tells her new BFF that she might not be a size zero for very long. Which means <gasps> she's, she's been pole darked. Here come the pilchers! Woo! -hoo! The villagers grab their baskets and go to gather up the fish. Quick, somebody tell Ross to take his shirt off and go down and help. Wheel Ledger is not striking copper. It looks like it's going to be a dismal Christmas. The Numpara Poldarks have been invited to have Christmas with the Trentwith Poldarks. Demelz is anxious. She's going to be sick. Aunt Agatha makes the girls sit together to see how they measure up. Oh, no, she didn't. Ooh, tech-a. Demelza's first party frock arrives and she's so excited. Ross tells her, don't blame yourself out for this crew. It's open mic night at Trentwith. Syllabubs forces Demelza to get up and sing. And she knocks it out of the park. And wins Ross's heart. As if she hadn't already. He's grown accustomed to her face. Merry Christmas, my love. He said love! Ah! Just in time for Christmas, Will Ezra hits Copper. Ross finally tells Demelza that she's more than just a distraction. Then, Demelza gives Ross his present. She's got a little Christmas bun in the oven. <laughs> Looks like the Cornwall Cougar is going to start knitting baby booties. Yeah! Woo! Ooh, there's a new doctor. Doctor who? No, Doctor Eye Candy. Sweet. Ross's war buddy, Dr. Dwight Ennis, arrives. Hello, Dr. Eye Candy. He's the one who made sure Ross's face was pulled dark and hits. Mmm. Dr. Eye Candy has come to Well Azure to do a study of mind diseases. I've already got a mind disease. He's mine. No, he's mine. 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 Pregnant woman I've ever seen. The Cornwall community players have come to town. At the matinee, Demelza starts experiencing labor pains. Ross stays for the second act while she goes back to Nampara. Suddenly, Demelza goes into labor. <laughs> it's a girl! <laughs> Woo! Baby Julia Grace Holdark is born. Ah. At the baptism, Ross checks out both his ladies. Elizabeth and Demelza. As different as night and day. Verity says, perhaps you'd like them both. Dr. Eye Candy says he envies Ross's life. Ross finds out the Choke sold his shares in Will Leisure to War Leggin. And now more investors want to sell. Hmm. Shakespearean hussy Karen Smith has eyes for Mark Daniel. She's looking for a sugar daddy. Verity stares at Blamey's etching. She hasn't forgotten the wife-killing captain. Ross is off to raise money to buy out his investors. I know. Take your shirt off. That'll raise lots of money. To raise money, Ross could mortgage Nampara. Or take, take your, your shirt, shirt off. off. Demelza pops in on Blamey to play matchmaker. But Blamey says he's moved on. It's auction day for the mines. Everything goes for half its value. Ross and Demelza get invited to Warlegan's house party. Demelza can't wait to bling herself out. But Ross says it ain't that kind of party. He's going alone. Demelza arranges for an impromptu meeting between Verity and Captain B. But Verity says, oh no, you better don't. In the streets, the miners riot. All hell breaks loose. But Blamey decides this is the perfect moment to pledge my love. Please hear me out. I thought you were married to your ship. But you are ever so much snugglier. Oh, I cannot. The miners are missing and corn is going for free. Although I do love corn, I've been waiting for years and uh, years. I cannot bear it. How are we to endure it? The parting, the hurting. No, never the parting. What about the hurting? There might be some hurting. I do have an anger management problem. It doesn't matter. I love you. I love you. <gasps> we'll have a life filled with love and corn. Ross tells Demelza that Verity's life is about to change. Francis lost it all at the tapes. Grambler! He gambled away Grambler! Feeble Francis has to face the miners at Grambler. And tell them what a loser he is. It's 12 noon, and Grambler is closed down. We're sir again. What does that mean? I shall rise again. Will they? <laughs> <laughs> Francis!
Francis is signing. He needs to stop. Just stop. He's going to ruin the good name of sexy signing. When Ross comes to see Francis, women everywhere say, take your shirt off and help him sign. Yeah. Here comes Ross the signing. God, take off your shirt, show off your bod. Rawr. It's Ross's first copper auction as leader of the smelting company. And the Carnmore Copper Company is kicking ass at the auction. All the other buyers are like, WTF? That Shakespearean hussy crops to Mark that she could have done way better than him. Once he's off to the mines. Hi ho. Mm-hmm, that hoe climbs up a high ladder. And throws herself off. Ooh, you mean she's gone? Nope, she wants to be swaddled in bandages by Dr. Eye Candy. In town, Miss Syllabubs tattles on Verity to Ross. She spills the beans that Verity's been secretly seeing Captain B. Dr. DeWhiteful is patching up the Shakespearean hussies boo-boo. Demelza tells Ross that they've been invited to the ball. But all he wants to do is make out. Ross says that word on the street is that Verity has been hooking up with Bad News Blamey again. He wonders how that happened. She's just thinking, shut up and kiss me. Be Be before I, I get, get in, in trouble. trouble. There is a fever at the jail. Dr. Eye Candy and Ross head over to help. Ross and Ennis finagle their way into the prison. And they find young Jim at death's door. Poor Jim Carter dies despite heroic efforts to save him. Poor Jenny's distraught. To avoid spreading disease, Ross must burn all his clothes on the beach. I feel so wrong. Demelza worries that Ross will be in trouble for his actions at the jail. Verity shows up and says you must go to the ball. Or Ross will be in a world of hurt with Cornwall society. It's Demelza's first ball. And the boys are behaving badly. Ross abandons Demelza to go get smashed. Demelza descends the staircase like Eliza Doolittle at the embassy ball. The powdered wig brigade comes to Ross and talks him into a game of cards. That's not good. Reverend Hulse arrives and joins Ross at the table. Double pole dark moment. Ross is losing his shirt at the card table. Woohoo! Not literally. Oh. In the final hand, Ross uncovers that Sanson's been cheating all along. They fight. Ross takes him down. And Sanson's wig goes flying. Oh, oh no. In the morning as they're leaving, Ross finds out that Sanson is Warlegan's cousin. Ruh roh, faux pas. At Jim Carter's funeral, Ross is sober for the first time in days. Demelza tells him to stop fighting the world. You can only make your small corner a fairer place. Let's start with getting my necklace back. And lay off the sauce. Take off your shirt. Yeah. Ooh, here comes a Shakespearean hussy. To be or not to be? Not to be. Love notes from Captain Blamey to Verity are being left in a super secret hideaway. They're playing post office Cornwall style. Woo! Woo! He's a superstar, look and see, oh yeah. Is there a letter from Captain Blamey? The white killers don't matter to me. After all, I'm poor Verity. Karen the Shakespearean hussy is sniffing around Dr. Eye Candy again. But Mark has his eyes on them. Verity has had enough. Verity is finally shore side with Captain Blaine. Beaming and planning her nautical themed nuptials. Fuming Francis wonders who helped the lovebirds to reunite. So the housekeeper blabs. Francis throws a tantrum. Again. The doctor has a new companion. That Shakespearean hussy Karen just can't stay away. She says she's just like the TARDIS. She's bigger on the inside. She's all stretched out from being a hoe. Doctor. Doctor. Yes. Give me the news. What news? I've got a bad case. I'm sure that you do. Of loving you. You're not going to throw yourself off a ladder again, are you? No pill's gonna cure my ills. Apparently, she hasn't heard of penicillin. I've got a bad case of loving you. Mark's looking for his cheating wife. He catches her doing the walk of shame coming out of the doctor's pad. So he beats her home and he confronts her. She cries and says, the doctor started it. So Mark grabs her and he squeezes her just a little too tight. And breaks that little Shakespearean hussy neck of hers. Oops. The doctor finds Karen's dead body on the floor. Meanwhile, murdering Mark seeks refuge with Ross. Ross is going to help him get out of town before he gets arrested. The red coats arrive looking for Mark. So Ross throws him off the scent. Demelza and Garrick are home alone. Dr. Eye Candy comes to the door. Before she can chase him off, and why would she want to? I don't know. Mark shows up. The two men go at each other. So she has to hold them off. Ross helps Mark escape in his boat. Then he runs home and has Demelza get rid of all his clothes. The Redcoats come knocking, so they pretend Nampara has been arrived. Verity and Captain Blamey get married on the love boat. Woo! Carnmore is ruined and it's all Demelza's fault. Ross can't even look at her. Demelza wonders, is it forever? He doesn't know. Demelza says she won't be happy until it's all fixed. Ross says you won't be happy for a long time. Here we go. I'm ready. Demelza's lovely voice begins the final episode of season one. Demelza tries to make amends for what she's done by baking for the miners. And for Judd and Prudy who've been living in Ross's barn. 
Everyone's coming down with putrid throat, including everyone at Trend with. But Dr. Cho thinks he's got it handled. With leeches. Ew. Ross is off to the auction to see if he could turn things around for Carnmore. But George Warligan gets the upper hand at the auction. Carnmore is toast. Demelza goes to Trentwith to tend to everyone with putrid throat. Elizabeth must be near death because she's not wearing lipstick. So Demelza says she'll stay and take care of them until girlfriend can get her face back on. Demelza returns to Nampara only to find that she has the putrid throat. And she's given it to baby Julia! Dr. Eye Candy's called, but he can do nothing for them. Demelza's delirious. In her dreams, she sees Ross and Elizabeth together. While Ross prays at her bedside. The doctor comes in with a face that tells it all. Baby Julia has died. With Demelza still in her sick bed. Ross must carry his daughter's casket to the grave. All the miners turn out to pay their respects. Including Francis. The maiden voyage of Warligan's Queen Charlotte is shipwrecked. Booty isn't the only thing washing up on the shore. There are survivors, too. Riots and chaos ensue. Ross tries to help the survivors. And takes them back to Nampara. Elizabeth comes to tend to Demelza. Ross prays that he doesn't lose the love of his life. Proving that once and for all, he is over Elizabeth. Demelza wakes up. She asks Ross, has she come to take you? And he says, no, my love. She will never take me. Elizabeth overhears this, and she knows its history. Ross has to tell Demelza the bad news. Baby Julia did not survive. In the most heartbreaking scene of the season, Demelza breaks down when she realizes her baby is gone. And she wasn't there to say goodbye. Warlegan pays a visit to Trent with. But he hasn't come to see Francis. He makes his intentions known to Elizabeth. Ross rides a weak Demelza out to the beautiful Cornwall coast. She asks him to make up with Francis. He marvels at her generous heart. He says he'll make Francis a part of Wheel Leisure. Demelza releases baby Julia's bracelet into the wind. A proper goodbye. The Redcoats arrive! Ross is being arrested! What's he accused of? Wrecking! My sleep. Shirtless siding. Incendiary hotness. Killer bot. Small dark and all over the place. Lethal good looks. Malicious lusciousness. Mm. Premeditated sexiness with intent to thrill. Inciting the Cornwall Cougars. Rawr! And welcome back. <laughs> Yay, so what did you think? Oh gosh, it was season one, it sucked me right in. I loved the characters, loved the storyline. It got me interested in reading the books because there's yes. even more detail and even more pole dark. Exactly, and everybody's looking for a Downton Abbey replacement. This is it. This is the show that's gonna do that for you. Yeah, it, it gets you right in and you're involved and you care about these characters and you care about what's gonna happen Yes. Next. So if you enjoyed this episode, please check out our full Pole Dark Dish episodes. These are little abridged versions of all of the craziness, yes. all of the silliness, and all of the cougarness that you will see in full episodes of the Pole Dark Dish. Click below. We're all on YouTube. Watch the full season. You've got a little time. We're so excited to be doing Pole Dark Dish season two because for the first time, we're going to be producing it for the UK audiences. Let's tell you about how that came about, the idea for us to do it for the UK audiences. We were actually invited to lunch by the producers of Poldark, Damien Timmer, executive producer, and Karen Thrussell. We had no idea they watched Poldark Dish or they're, even knew of our existence. They're Poldark Dish fans! Who would have guessed? And then they gave us a sneak preview of season two. Yes. It looks so amazing. We can't, can't wait. wait. <laughs> oh my God. And let me tell you again, it was so exciting meeting Damien and meeting Karen and the writer, Debbie Horsfield. They all sat down and talked to us about what it was like shooting season one, what their favorite favorite parts were and we were just thr so thrilled and so honored that they're actually Pole Dark Dish fans. I can't remember who alerted us but somebody said oh you've got to watch this look at this link. I think it must have been after the first episode oh, actually. Gosh. We wa because then after we'd watched episode one your first you know first uh, um, episode one uh, Pole Dark Dish we were all going oh my god when's the next one out and we just were dying to see it after that so oh no we were thrilled god. actually. It's they even knew the Cornwall Cougar Rawr. Rawr. So let's hear about this Pole Dark Dish quest. Yes, because we love giving things away here at the Pole Dark Dish. We have a fun little quest based on this episode. We want you to go and rewatch the episode and we're gonna ask you fun questions like how many times we say sexy scything. Or rawr. Exactly. The questions will be on our website, so check out our website below. And anybody that gets the answers right, your name will go in a hat for some fabulous prices which will be named on our website. You have to go to the website. 
go to the website. Now the pole dark dish wants to be your resource for all things pole dark, but we're all inclusive. So we are going to be cross promoting and featuring pole dark fan sites. We're going to be uh, bloggers, bloggers. Uh, There's podcasts. amazing pole dark bloggers and podcasters we out there. We want to build a pole dark community for yes. people who love pole dark like yes. we do. So we're going to welcome everybody here. You could be guests on our show and we'll be sharing your Twitter accounts and sharing all your social media accounts and all your blog posts, everything. But what do you watch first? Pole dark dish. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Marlene. And I'm Elise. And we're the, the Cornwall, Cornwall Cougars, Cougars on Pole Dark Dish. Rawr. We want Ross. Yes, we do. We want Ross. How about you? Rawr.